We are mobile. We're on the prowl. We're on the hunt. Not necessarily for fish even, are we? First ice, baby. <laughs> first first ice of the season. Never thought I would get this excited about ice fishing. It's disgusting. It is kind of, I mean, you know, some of you guys will be watching this saying, Tom, I cannot actually believe you're that excited for ice fishing. Other guys will be you know, frothing at the mouth for this opportunity as well. But, you know, when you spend like a week in the garage just getting ice fishing stuff ready, it reaches a point where like, you just, you're excited to go ice fishing at that point. You just want to get out of the garage, get out of the house and go ice fishing. So uh, I don't know what the date is right now. We've already been driving for about an hour. We're probably got a lot more driving to do, but this is a trip into the unknown kind of, we don't even really know, like, you know, we could end up in Northern Wisconsin. We could end up in Western Minnesota. We could end up in Northwestern North Dakota, but we got a few days to find some ice. Now, expectations, Mitch is behind the camera right now. He's gonna be kind of documenting this little, series to hopefully find ice but um i mean we don't have expectations set to the moon right now could we get on some fish we could the goal is just to catch a fish through the ice on this video i think i mean i think that's realistic right i hope so and this video might span into tomorrow in fact it's more than likely going to span into tomorrow already at this point based on the time we've left but we got text messages rolling in you ready we checked a bunch today, but only two were fishable. And by fishable, I mean 2.5. Do you want to reply? Not yet, we'll hold off for a second. So we're reaching out to all resources we have right now, trying to dial something in on where there's fishable ice. Grant, I mean, a lot of this ice was like just made in the last couple days right now. So um, we got a couple different leads in which we're gonna go explore, maybe find something. And uh, I will always say this about first ice, don't go unless you do a lot of checking and you're very safe about it. Stay tuned. We're hopefully gonna find some ice. This might be a multi-day endeavor. Should be exciting. A lot of you guys are probably in our same shoes right now looking for ice, so stay tuned. Let's make it happen. Could this whole video potentially be riding on this? I either just set something down back in the hole that looked like a fish or was a fish. We live? We are. All folks are at stop number one. Drove uh, close to five hours to get here. And I don't know how well it should we walk down there. Can yeah. they see it from here? Pretty, pretty open. I mean, it's pretty deflating to be honest with you. <laughs> So this lake is, it's gotta be, a, this is probably 12,000 acres, huh? Is it? I don't know, see, I don't know. Or no, sorry, 1,200 acres. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is not 12,000. Ain't 12,000, but. You could pop a hole right here. I mean, this would be ice fishing. There is like snow on it. I made it, Mitchell. Well, pretty deflating to be honest with you guys, because as you can see about 20 feet past me, it is open water. So that can only mean one thing. We either have to go smaller lakes, shallower lakes, smaller and shallower lakes, or farther north and west, or farther north and west and smaller and shallower lakes. So we have options. It's dark now though. So we're gonna have to find this place to shack up for the night so that we can continue our search tomorrow. But uh, a little deflating right off the bat. Stop number two, baby. Stop number two. Now, if you come over here, Mitchell, and you look down, first of all, it looks like ice, which is a good sign. But second of all, this is signs of the elusive ice fisherman has already been here. And it's, there's actually like holes and you can actually see a little ice shanty out here. Now it's crazy the difference in a seven mile drive that one lake to another, roughly the same size lake has, isn't it? Yeah. This lake's just a little bit smaller, but it's way shallower, clearly. Um, 
So this is a good sign. This is the optimism we needed to kind of get us through the night so that hopefully we can come here and catch a two inch perch tomorrow. But you never know. I mean, we got to do some research because I honestly don't know. We were going to go to a totally different area, sniff some stuff out and was told uh, that this area also had potential. So um, kind of exciting. I don't know. I mean, at least we found ice we could definitely walk on. I don't know how thick this stuff is. I'm assuming it's, it's at least three or four. You're not gonna be able to check this. It's just a spud bar mark. Under my feet, it feels like a solid three or four inches right here, which is kind of crazy. So it's not gonna like bust open and win. It's definitely locked in. So it's time to go back, find a hotel, do some research, get some dinner, figure out what kind of fish are in this lake, rig up and hopefully potentially come back here. Or if it says like there's just bullheads in here or something, maybe we'll try to find somewhere else, but <laughs> it's a start, baby. Someone did walk out here with their dog. And if it's safe enough for a dog, it's safe enough for this dog. She just glazed the F over. Day two. We're currently glassing lakes. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing what's glazed over and what's not. Now some of these, a couple of these we checked last night uh, and we're just kind of kind of like reassure like or uh, see um, if we made ice or what kind of the situation is. Obviously the difficult part here is that um, uh, if we were like within a hundred miles of where I live, I could tell you what little lakes like suck and most of them do suck um, and which ones are good. That The problem you always run into when you're fishing little lakes is that there's no info. There's very rarely like stocking information or like fishing reports from like smaller lakes like this. As you can see, I mean, this is basically the whole lake. But um, it, the ones we have less confidence in are ones that have like a max depth of five feet, right? Those are gonna be tough lakes to probably find a fish in. But this one actually gets like 20 feet deep in the middle and it is 100% frozen. And it almost looks like there's like a spud bar mark out there, like 200 yards out right there, which I don't know if that was from like a couple days ago or what the situation is, but we're gonna get out of the truck, check it, see what we got for ice conditions. So this little lake actually cracked on me last night when I was checking ice. <laughs> Definitely made some ice, not a ton. Dude, one more day you'd be like, you'd be like really good. I mean, could you physically make it out here like and stay on top? 100% you could. There's probably two and a half inches right now. Oh, it's just not, it's not quite, I mean, it's, it's very close. It's probably two and a half. This is a really heavy spud bar. Should we take our actually first core sample? So you're looking at that fat part there. Probably two and a half inches. It's good ice. Like in my younger days, when I was a complete idiot, probably would have gone out there, but I can guarantee you with the temps today, it's supposed to get out of seven degrees tonight. 100% there'll be three plus inches out there tomorrow, which three plus inches of really good hard black ice is definitely safe. But right now you're kind of, you know, I'd be fine. Mitch has a few more pounds on than me. So, you know, I might lose the cameraman midday. Made a lot of ice though last night. Probably made an inch of ice last night. 
Yesterday I jumped like this. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. Yo. 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 Uh, that Norway lake you fished at? Yeah. And it was, you fished it last year on the ice. Hold on, let me look at a bunch of Norway. I'm so pretty sure I saw that point and I started on. It's that one that's like south of uh, where you would have stayed, like probably 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, yep. It's got a bunch of crappies in it. Okay. It's an hour away from us in the south southerly direction, so that's our only game here. But yeah, been, so it's. Let me, let me find it again. We've been driving around for six hours now, and we've seen a couple junkies out there, you know, trying to rip some lips, but we're kind of contemplating. These lakes have zero information that have ice, so that's kind of hard to climb on. Yeah. But if you say you've actually fished Norway, it might make me drive all the way down there. In like two days, there's going to be a lot of fishable stuff over here. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff with like lot of stuff with two inches on it right now. Oh. Yeah. We're hunting down some leads, though. Okay. So. Have you got any? little sassy info from any other people that fish that neck of the brush or no we're about to go to the bait shop and just blend in with the locals yeah and pick up a pack of grubs yeah. and say hey, i'm here on you know thanksgiving break and just you know looking to stretch a string and got any yeah. hot leads for me so, okay I'll, I'll let you know i'll hunt them down big dog i appreciate the info well we're gonna go check a lake an hour away see if it has ice like that we actually know has fish in it you guys might be thinking this is all just like a big circus ordeal just to try to find a, a fish right but i mean the goal is obviously we try to minimize some water to find a better fish not just find like oh you know just step on ice and say we did it you know we did it yay we did it so i mean hopefully if we drive all the way down there we find ice and then uh i mean it's just kind of you know, this is how it is this time of year. <laughs> there's basically no ice in here so here we go, another hour. I gotta stop at a gas station. I need more fuel for my body and mind. And we'll give you a shout, I guess, when we get there. And figure out that there's no ice there anyway. <laughs> Come all the way back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, camera on, lights, camera action. Here's the deal, boys. Ice, ice fishing early ice is often more about this and communicating with your fellow anglers as it is about going and checking ice. After multiple days now of running around and looking at different things, I just went out and fished for about an hour on a pothole lake and the whole time we were out there I was saying to myself, this ain't me dog, I don't, this is not my style. Got a lead, which we're gonna have to follow up on here with some phone calls. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. It's a picture of ice. It's a picture of ice. And next to it was labeling that said four to five inches. So, that's safe ice. Not only is that safe ice, but that's safe ice in a lake in which I know has walleyes in it. So we're jumping the truck right now. Crappies can, <laughs> come on you guys, <laughs> nobody wanted to see that. So we're in the truck, we're gonna just take off, pedal to the metal, gotta make a bunch of phone calls in the next hour. Hopefully we'll be catching some walleyes before the sun goes down tonight. This is often near the ice game, running here, running there, checking ice, changing plans, improvise, adapt, overcome. Well, guys, drove three hours. Windier than hell here, too. <laughs> Mitchell's bundled up like the Michelin man, as am I. We have a very short amount of time to make this happen here. But, you know, catching a walleye is better than catching 2,000 crappies, right, Mitchell? Right. I mean, at least it is in my mind. So, stay tuned. This is going to go kind of fast. The goal is to literally just catch a fish or two. the wind or if we got our first flag 
It's spinning, it's spinning. Get over here, Mitchell. Oh my goodness, you guys. Come on, still be on there. A lot of times these fish out here, I notice they don't run a lot. The old beaver dam. It's the first beaver dam of the year, Mitchell. Could this whole video potentially be riding on this? It was a walleye. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Got him. Got him. Oh, oh, Mitchell. He came up. He came up high. Oh, dude. This this whole three days right now is coming down to this. It feels like a good one. Oh, dude, we did it. We did it. <laughs> yes, dude. Oh, Mitchell. What a roller coaster of emotion it's been, am I right? We Mitch just having camera problems because it's you know just like ridiculously cold and windy out, which is just par for the course through the ice. And there we go. Fish number one of the ice fishing season right there, man. And it is a nice walleye to get things rocking and rolling. Does it get any better than that? It's all come to this. These first ice things are not like uh, oh, let's just go out and catch a bunch of fish. Always take some driving. Always takes a lot of calling buddies, and it always takes a lot of running around in the truck to find it. But we found it. Real feels probably just ridiculously cold right now, but dude, how's that look for a thumbnail, Mitchell? Perfect. Right there? Perfect. Let's let him go. Number one of the season. You could tell how cold it is. He was out of the water for about 20 seconds, and he was just frozen like a rock. Number one, buddy. We did it. How does it feel? It feels good. It feels really good. Oh, first of many this ice season. Rolling. End of another day. Day two of ice season. Today was better day because we actually caught a fish. But <laughs> it was one fish. It was a lonely fish, but we did achieve the objective by catching a fish. This video, we don't really know what it's going to look like. We don't really know. Well, we don't. It's probably going to look really, really cool or really terrible. But it will show the realistic part of fishing this time of year. A lot of time in the truck driving around, checking ice, communicating with people you know, seeing where there's ice, where there's bad ice. And that led us to where we are now. Um, we are currently in my buddy Chaz's ice house. And we got lucky enough to stay in this thing tonight. Look them up. You guys know I stay here in these all the time in the winter. First city guide service, link down below. Him and Corbin do a phenomenal job. Eventually they'll have these things out on fish, but right now, we're not gonna catch a whole lot on the rattle reels tonight. But we're gonna be here tonight. We're gonna be fishing walleyes tomorrow. And it's only gonna get better tomorrow because tomorrow we know we'll have a lot more time. We'll probably catch more fish and it'll probably be generally a little bit more normal tomboy video. But appreciate you guys watching this one. The challenges of early ice fishing. Tomorrow's a new day. Appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned, check that ice, be safe out there. We'll see you guys next time.